It's showtime. Going live. It is showtime. What's up, guys? How you doing? Hey there, everybody. Welcome to uh, what is this? Wednesday. Our weekly live show. Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, it's Wednesday. There you go. Brantley's right. And uh, we have our special guest. Brantley's down here. What's up, Brantley? Hey, how's, how's it going, guys? Happy, Happy to be here. Got you over here. Uh, Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining the show. We're going to have a lot of fun. We got a secret special video from uh, Brantley that oh, he God. allowed me to show. So <laughs> you're going to see Which, a sign. You, you saw it here it's first. It's shocking. It's shocking. Because <laughs> Mark uh, told me about it, and I was like, what? I am shocked. That's enough yeah. teasers, right? <laughs> but uh, well, we got you saw it here first. first. Anyway, jump into it. Man stung in the testicles by Scorpion while sleeping at Las Vegas Strip Resort. What do you guys think? Bullshit. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I mean, hey, he's trying to he's trying to sue them for it too. That's this is the amazing well. Of course, part. he's trying to sue him for it. That's the whole. That's how you set up a scam. You bring the scorpion in, and you have to let it sting you because you have to have medical proof. Yeah, but I would believe a lot. Now I would believe a mouse. I would believe bed bugs, a cockroach. You know, I would be believe a lot of things. But a scorpion? Yeah, and how would you, no. you bring it in? And then what do you do? Put put peanut butter on your balls or something to get it? To <laughs> no, I think you just I think you just <laughs> drop it in your shorts and let it sting. You know? Oh, God, the things people will go through for a lawsuit. I, I, yeah, I'm that's... not shocked. Are either one of you shocked that someone would do this? I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked somebody would try it. I mean, yeah. I know there have been stories before of people like bringing in like a bug or something, you know, into like a restaurant or a hotel. I'm sure that they have some kind of protection in place for that. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it's like spraying for scorpions. Yeah. Uh, I think what's uh, what surprises me the most is how how much this article took off because I, you know, I get some pretty wild news in my uh, Google News app because I look at stuff like this all the time and i saw this one i thought it was funny i'm like dave let's just talk about this one on the show nobody will ever hear about it but suddenly i've been getting emails and messages from all of you guys saying hey look at this article and now it's on like it's on pub like big news sites and stuff it's like wow like that's I, proof i, I saw Why didn't it I think on of that first? the nightly news it oh, made did national you? news yeah <laughs> i'm like how does this happen <laughs> susan's comment that's ballsy <laughs> oh, <laughs> do -do -do ba -ba -ba. I think I'm just gonna have to. I'm gonna have to bring a uh, yeah, a jock strap. Joey said jock strap with a cup in it when I just go to, to Vegas protect. now, right? Full protection. Right, we, we got some <laughs> other news as well. Yeah, oh, not play online slots. That was me searching. I was searching for you, uh, uh, ginger lucky slots, <laughs> lucky ginger <laughs> slots. I was like, I don't think I've seen their channel. But big news in the slot world, IGT and Every are merging. Uh, this is a good this thing. Is, this is mm -hmm. amazing news, especially for three reels. Uh, both these companies have shown that they have a lot of dedication for three reel slots. And the fact that they're pairing up kind of makes me hope that some of Every's games get ported over in the Diamond RS cabinet. You know, I would really like to see that. Like se several of their older games would be awesome. And even some of the newer games would be awesome in a bigger cabinet. So what are I'm, some of the every games? I think, Brantley, you'd probably be the best to name some of these. Like, is it like Diamond Jackpots, Crystal so Stars? Their most, their most popular one is Wicked Wheel. Wicked, Wicked Wheel is probably, you know, their most popular one. Then they've got like the diamond jackpot reigns um black diamond is one of them because every does have a lot of every does have a lot of stepper games so right. uh games like black diamond games like zoltar stuff like that those are all every and we played those downtown uh zoltar is a fun game and yeah. also total meltdown I, I have a affinity for that one because of the noise is just so amazingly loud <laughs> like deafening loud but yeah, we will see what happens games they they do. And I see this as being probably one of the biggest news of manufacturers in a very yeah. long time. I mean, huge. Well, here's what happens at IAG. Uh, what happens to G2E this year? Is it just one booth or do we see two still? I think we'll see two. Um, I, I see don't two? think because the thing is, is it's not like I don't think both of the companies as a whole are merging together. It's just the gaming portion of IGT. 
gotcha. basically got sold off and every bought the gaming portion of IGT. They're just retaining the IGT name. So I think if anything is, it's going to be one of those subsidiaries. Like you have the IGT brand of games as a subsidiary under every holdings, which is their parent company. So I think that that's most likely what we'll see. So I think we'll still see the distinction between the two. Um, but obviously, you know, having the combined executive teams and stuff like that, you know, they'll come together. They'll make some pretty cool stuff. I'm don't, I don't doubt that <laughs> for sure. I can see a lot of neat innovation coming from them though, for sure. And also in the news, the new A's stadium, the Oakland A's moving to Las Vegas. This is on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard. I mean, I really don't know about this. This design is a little over the top from what I was expecting. Yeah, it's hard to vision. Oh, mm. I guess you could see like MGM Grand on the right there. Right. And you and see then, uh, Excalibur in the background. Oh, my God. The traffic is going to be such a nightmare around that thing. You know, you got to you got to wonder with that stadium and Allegiant Stadium and all of that, because I know like Allegiant Stadium causes a huge headache for any time there's a big event. Um, how is that going to affect? So like Excalibur has like that open parking lot and stuff like that. Right. Are the casinos going to have to raise or change their parking policy or their parking fees? Because, you know, casinos like Excalibur, MGM, they're right there. You know that people are going to come in and they're going to park yeah. there. So on gaming days, are they going to close that to just hotel guests? Uh, how would they yeah. monitor that? Or are they going to charge people $100 to park in their lot? $100 to park. <laughs> on event day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 sure it's like $100 parking. to park. But yeah. one of the kind of cool things about this is the inside. That does look cool. That does look pretty freaking cool. That huge jumbotron built into the ceiling of it. That's kind of neat. I mean, for, I'm for surprised they don't have say. a sports betting screen right above that. <laughs> oh, right. I, I have a feeling there will be lots of sports betting going on. Right. Yeah. Terminals inside. Now, I've heard rumor that there will be a casino attached, but nothing in the images or any of the release shows that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's still a work in progress. I know the MLB was against that, but they were talking about inside the stadium attached might be a different story. So we're going to have to wait and see on that one. And Chris says, looks like a bird killer with all those windows. <laughs> 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 it does. Good point. Firefly says it looks like the Sydney Opera House. It really does, that's actually. What a lot of people compared it to. Yeah. Yeah. Really does. They couldn't even come up with their own design. They had to steal a design and put it into some, for some reason, baseball stadium. Which yeah. I think this is the worst spot for a baseball stadium in all of Las Vegas. This is the worst spot. Put it right next to Allegiant Stadium. You know, you have a little overlap there in in game time, but not much. So put it there. But you no know one what asked else me. They, what else they could have done? They could have made it a giant cube. Because they just built the giant sphere, and with the <laughs> Allegiant right. and with and with the Allegiant yeah. Stadium, they already have a giant Roomba and vacuum you got the cleaner. Triangle. There you go. So, the yeah, <laughs> and they got the triangle. It'll look like just yeah. shapes. What is that? <laughs> so toys or whatever we used to play as kids, <laughs> right? Match up. The oh, shapes. this is a really, really good point. I didn't think about this. Uh, Sixty-three home games. Whew. Like mm -hmm. that's what's big. That's what's hugely different from. <laughs> You know, having the football stadium nearby. Does 63 Oakland have games. a basketball team? Because what else can Las Vegas steal from Oakland? I mean, they took football, they took baseball. I mean, what else is there to take from Oakland? <laughs> I know, it's true. It's definitely true. Um, I, I thought it was crazy that that they were getting an ice hockey team in the middle of the desert, you know? What a, what a great place to put an ice hockey team. <laughs> They're it has sports done, craze. It, it, yeah. It's done really popular for them. Though. That's like, what it is. Sports craze. Hockey, right. I mean, football has brought in a lot of revenue. A lot of people are coming yeah. in. They've got F1, of course. Now baseball. Uh, next, they need a basketball team, which if they do have a basketball team, sorry, I don't know. I don't watch basketball. I wonder which <laughs> resort they'll tear down for that stadium. <laughs> uh, Oy Oyo, probably. Yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah. Which is good riddance is to that, that one. Staying there? Is that staying there? Oh. Uh, so there's far, no way that this big dang. thing is going to be next to Oyo. 
So Tropicana, although it doesn't look like it, is 35 acres, which is a pretty good well, chunk I don't, of real I estate. I can't visualize that, but when yeah. you don't have any parking. And so I think that's maybe why I haven't heard Oyo's uh, blowing up yet, but maybe it will. I wouldn't be yeah. a bad thing. I'd like to see it. Uh, probably that, he's please. right. Uh, <laughs> World pickleball championships coming soon. <laughs> you know, this pickleball I, craze is nuts, man. I never knew what pickleball was until I, I until I moved here. It's like really big in Utah. Is it really? It's really uh, big there, everywhere. There's, when you're driving through Salt Lake City, you see like signs for pickleball and like these pickleball places. I'm like, what? The, like, and I'm <laughs> I'm picturing I'm like are they hitting a pickle like what are they doing like i don't know what they're like i'm, I'm picturing like a like, i don't know why I like i'm it. picturing someone with like a tennis racket like hitting a pickle like, yeah <laughs> what is a pickle yeah. ball a pickle ball they i think it, it looks like badminton and pickle. To me. like a modern it, it, version of badminton it looks like or, a cross between like old beach paddle ball tennis ping pong badminton yeah. i mean it's like throw a bunch of sports together and Make white people good at it. There we go. It just <laughs> just came out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, oh, um, also, guys, if you do have any questions, uh, keep asking them. We'll get to those a little bit later in the show, but we're queuing them up here. So uh, feel free to just add. You don't have only have to ask it once. We'll see it and we'll start it and then we'll come back to it uh, just to let you know. But we're going to make you sit through the whole show first. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's some fun stuff in the show, too. Yeah, absolutely. What? Uh, speaking of which, speaking of which, Plaza actually has pickleball courts on their roof. What? That is really? crazy. I heard about that. I'll never get up there to see, but that's okay. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. You were saying, Mark? Sometimes, sorry. Sometimes <laughs> I don't really believe Proud Monkey. I feel like he's always up to something. I don't know. The guy spends a lot of time <laughs> on the internet. You know. That's true. So he's got that going for him. That's true. <laughs> All right, oh. so uh, I have a video for you guys that Brantley let me share. So, oh God. Brantley, why don't you do a, a quick lead up to what this video is? <laughs> okay, okay. So there's this show that I absolutely love on. Uh, it's on Hulu. It's it's called The Food That Built America. It's an amazing show. You guys oh, should okay. check it out. It tells the story of like every single restaurant, every single like you get to hear some amazing stories. Like the story of Chick Fil A was really really freaking cool. Like I highly That's recommend great. this Chick Fil A episode. But there was an episode about um, spam, and I had never tried spam at all. And I was like, <laughs> you know, spam is like a pretty common thing, but I've never tasted it. Like, I've seen it, I've heard of it, but I've never had spam before. So I went to the store, and I bought a can of spam to try it, and it was 100% blind reaction, and I videoed it, and I sent it to Mark. So Mark has the video of never me trying spam. spam. <laughs> But I saw it on a show that I'm really addicted to, so I figured I would try it. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> it says fully cooked, ready to eat. You're you're supposed to eat it like this, right? Okay. <laughs> Apparently this oh god. <laughs> it smells like cat food. <laughs> <laughs> it smells exactly like cat food. This is my favorite part. Bloop. What is this goo on it? Is you never had Vienna sausages? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised the cats aren't over here. So, it said fully cooked. Sure doesn't look like it. Are you supposed to eat this goo? <laughs> I don't want to eat it, but it's part of it. <clears throat> Oh, you're going to eat it cold? Oh, oh God. <laughs> That's cat food. That's cat food. <laughs> what the hell? This is popular? <laughs> this is popular cooked. Now, I will Over say, days. I did try it cooked, and it is much better cooked. <laughs> It, it is smells much better. Exactly cooked. like a, the cat's food. <laughs> like I feel like but it's I'm already pre cooked. <laughs> it says ready to eat. It's not ready to so, eat. So I thought it was uh, like sliced or something. <laughs> you gotta slice it. You can make spam musubi. 
Spam and eggs. I mean, should I get some of this goo? Oh, on? don't do it. it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -mm. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for not eating that. What is what is spam exactly? What is it supposed to be? Don't look. you don't want to read that? Don't read that label. <laughs> so it shows it on a sandwich. So people slice this and they put it on a sandwich. Yep. So Do I not mean, read that label. This is made for people. Doesn't smell <laughs> like it. It's made for people. <laughs> Pork with ham. Salt water, modified potato starch, sugar, sodium nitrate. Pretty basic. I wouldn't eat this on a regular basis. I would not. All right. <laughs> all right so i i will say I, that that's freaking hilarious but i will say this i i gotta give spam a little bit of credit because when you cook it it does taste a lot different oh yeah. it was actually pretty good it. cooked and this morning i tried it cooked with some eggs and it it was okay it was okay but would i eat it on a regular basis no and i don't know how they can say it's fully cooked ready to eat in the can i don't know who would eat that just straight out of the can but well, i mean Fully cooked, ready to eat is like, you know, it is edible out of the can. It doesn't need to be cooked. But like, you know, if you're in a bad situation, you're going to eat it. But I mean, like I, I grew up on spam. We had, oh man, sliced spam and sandwiches. It was, it was either spam was cooking or fried bologna was cooking. Either way, you knew you're getting a good sandwich for lunch. Yeah. So I'd, I'd like, never had spam before. That was my first time trying spam. <laughs> I could totally tell it was your first time. Yeah. <laughs> Now, now it's time for me to reveal a little secret. Go I've never for had it. it either. Never had spam. Man, you kids. <laughs> there you go. Rich. So I guess I'm going to have to do this challenge too. <laughs> and you've never had Vienna sausages? No, I've had Vienna sausages, but I've okay. never had spam before. And potted. All right, Mar Mark. We'll, we'll, we're 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 going to need your video, your blind reaction. Oh, I'll spam do that video. on the next. Okay, on Jody, yeah, make I'll him do it. it. <laughs> she will. Don't worry. <laughs> She definitely will. But I found what you need. Here's what you need, Brantley. Ooh. Oh, I remember those. I remember Spam those. Game. Those are so old. Spam slot machine. Look at you that. You kind of want that topper. I know. Isn't the topper awesome? That's pretty nice. That's great. I'd buy just for the, I don't care what the game is. I just want just the, for topper the topper. The, the game. Yeah. It looks so cool. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. I think we got all the news covered, right? I think so. I think that's it. Let's Everybody's talking some... about fried bologna now. We're getting hungry. Oh, yeah. I know. We yeah. <laughs> got him kicked off. And Cowboy Slots needs to get down to Wimstar Choctaw. Yes, he does. Yeah, I do. Right. I'm on, Brandon. I do. We'll have a lot of fun. I do. You're going to fall in love with these bingo games. I'm telling you. Here's the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand unless you live in Wyoming. It is a million times more crap to deal with traveling in and out of Wyoming. <laughs> it's true. not as easy as just, you know, cause even like the airport's three hours away and then we got to, you know, the winter storms and stuff like that. So it's like, it's a big hassle just to get out of Wyoming. Like even to go, even to go to, you know, Wendover, which is only three hours away is like, Oh, great. Uh, you know, it's a lot of planning has to go into it, but I do want to get down to Windstar for sure. Uh, oh. I just I thought just, a question. I hear this, Brantley. Since Brantley's here. <laughs> you got to get down here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. No excuses. So, unrelated <laughs> to gambling. Okay, Brantley. Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I recently read an article about house sales there. Hole. I, what is, is everybody just watching Yellowstone and they're buying the jackets <laughs> and the hats and, and coming out to Wyoming and spending $10 million on two or three acres? So it is, on. it is the most, I believe it's actually the most expensive zip code in the country. It is nuts to, to live in. Um, the reason being is pretty much every single billionaire that is their primary residence because Wyoming does not have any taxes. So most companies, stuff like that, most billionaires, they have a residency here. Um, 
I, I've, I've even, I even have a friend of mine that says, Hey, how do I get a, a mailbox in Wyoming? Because he wants to move his business license here because there's no tax. So a lot of that's kind of boosted that, um, it's a beautiful area. I mean, you're surrounded by the national park and stuff like that. Um, but it's just, it's extremely wealthy. Like every, every house there, like you won't find a house for cheaper than like 10, $15 million up there. Yeah. It looks like a couple of you guys are saying, uh, Chris says it too. Yep. Fed reserve. Yep. Yep. Some of those, you got a bunch of suits living there. Basically there was like rent for $43,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that big a house. I mean, a a third of an acre house, house on a third of an acre was like 1.2 million. And that was cheap. I mean, it was like a shack. I was like, that's insane. There are more places in Wyoming. There's also some interesting things about Wyoming. Wyoming is not just like a tax haven, but we have certain laws in place that no other state has. Um, So like, for example, we're one of the only states that there's certain items like when you register a business here there's certain items you do not have to disclose that can remain private whereas other states you know it has to be public information um even like here in wyoming if you if you win the lottery you can be anonymous you you don't have to you know announce it or anything like that Um, but for businesses and corporations it's really really big here because there's so much additional protections like there's Like there's ways in Wyoming, like the corporate structure where companies can essentially like, you know, hide assets and stuff like that, that just simply can't be seen because they don't have to record it or report it. So a lot of those like Jackson Hole is kind of like where they're all condensed up there, which is about two hours from my house. About I'm about two hours south of there. It's like the new Delaware for business. Yeah, it's like the new Delaware side business, Brantley have sell you rent out your mailbox you know yeah there you go right yeah you have 30 or 40 companies coming in rent a mailbox in, you start it you send it back to them for a exorbitant fee oh yeah they're paying that much for yeah. rent they can afford a mailbox oh yeah that is so crazy to me man um, so much for buying a house there i know right <laughs> how big is every compared to igt oh very small i think yeah compared to igt uh, need- there IGT Tiny. is a mammoth company, huge. And IGT's like gaming division is actually relatively small compared to everything else that they do. They do lottery terminals, yep. they do game terminals, they do all kinds of stuff. And so now, I will say if you want to know how big every is, even though every is not super small, it's just small compared to IGT. Anytime you go up to a card kiosk at your local casino, most likely it's made by every. Yep. That's true. That's true. They got the hold on that. That's for sure. Yeah. All the ATMs, the kiosks, stuff like that. (laughs) They're all every. And Elaine has a question. Hey, guys, can you address the reset on the slots? So I'm going to jump to a conclusion and assume that you mean that slots are being reset. And what does that mean? Uh, There is no such thing as a reset. Um, Yes, there's a guy out there talking about resets and you should time your resets and You know, play when the machine's been idle for 60 minutes, two hours, three. The longer you wait, the more likely it's going to pay you. It's all BS, all BS. Machines don't reset. Even if they turn the power off and they turn it back on, it's going to go back to where it was. It's it's, There's no reset where it's like, "Ah, I'm going to adjust the wins and start paying out more wins and losses. And Oh, man, Brantley, we used to get this question all the time. <laughs> like slot, slot, machines do, slot machines do not reset. It no. just, it's one of those things that, guys, again, uh, and it's like Mark and I say this all the time, too. There is nothing you can do other than self-control and picking better machines to affect anything about the machine, waiting a certain amount of time, playing at six in the morning, playing on a weekend and <laughs> anything like that. It's like, guys, if you, if honestly, and you know, think about this, if it was that easy, don't you think there'd be a lot more people making a lot more money and there'd be a lot more lines at the casino. And do you think the casino would have caught on by now and put a stop to it? There's no such yep. thing as resets on a slot machine, pulling your card out, stuff like that. There's no special tricks to it. <sighs> Mark, yeah. I'd be at the casino. <laughs> Tagging the out side or gives it away. Sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you play this machine because it's pain. So we're going to go sleep while you keep playing and text me, you know, when you're getting tired and I'll come down and relieve you. 
That's how it would work if it was Mm -hmm. actually that way. People would never leave the machine. You see people with getting a drink of water just to be able to pee in the water because they don't want to leave. <laughs> As Brantley's taking that's a drink a be- of his water. That's a beautiful <laughs> that's a picture, one. Dave. That's a beautiful <laughs> picture, Dave. <laughs> right. As Brantley took a drink. Just and suddenly all the sales on Amazon of pee bags jump <laughs> jump straight up. You know. Camping and wow. slot camping at a slot machine. Here you go. Why we're not getting questions. They're all on Zilla looking at Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, just wondering. Oh, it's it's finally. I mean, we laugh and we sigh and all that stuff, and we understand why you asked that question because it's very common. It's a very popular question. And I mean, this is unfortunately there are I mean, there are people on YouTube that are just pushing this narrative of stuff that just doesn't exist. Uh, I mean I know exactly. Professor Slots is the person that came up with this whole reset nonsense. And mm-hmm. it's probably one of his most viewed videos on TikTok right now um, was talking about machine resets and that you should wait until it's idle for a certain amount of time. And that's just, there's no way that's possible. It's just not possible. So there, unfortunately, there are no resets. Um, every spin is individual, indi- individual and separate from anything that's come before it. Uh, you cannot predict the future on slot machines. Nobody can. Not you, not the casino, not the manufacturer who built the game. Nobody knows. Not even the machine itself until you push that button. Then it knows. That's it. Exactly. <sighs> yeah, a lot of bad information coming out of that dude. Let's see. Um, Rockstock has a good one. Is Winstar uh, comparable to some of the casinos in Vegas? Boy, it's different. I it's different, yeah. It, that's a hard thing to say, like comparable. I know comparable. it's not. How? It's not Vegas. It's definitely apples not and oranges. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're comparing apples and oranges. Brantley just imagine, imagine like, um, imagine that you're walking into Park MGM, but there's four times the number of machines that are currently in there, on the floor. Every inch of space in Park MGM yeah. is covered, with and machines. everything's black. The carpet's black, the ceiling's black, the walls are black. There's hardly any light in there. That's Windstar and very smoky. Yeah. <laughs> but the machines are great. Yeah. There's a good the bingo food machines. selection. The bingo machines. Yeah. Good food selection. There is a yep. decent food selection. The hotel's nice, very comfortable. Uh, no complaints, but it's not Vegas. It's neat. It's close by. It's the largest casino in the world. They have a great entertainment, everything like that. They have awesome promotions, but no, it's not Vegas. Uh, yeah. It is really great that you don't have to go to Vegas to have a really neat experience. Oh, and the spa. I mentioned the spa. The spa is amazing. Yeah. But it is not Vegas. Um, yeah. I would highly recommend you visit Spain thing with Choctaw in Oklahoma. Go visit two very nice casinos, but they don't like really compare to Vegas because there's only one of each of them and you're not getting the complete variety you do with vegas i mean in vegas you can literally walk from mandalay bay to the stratosphere and miss so many things yeah yeah cecil's right here uh, i walked the whole thing twice and one day i had to ask the staff to make sure i was really at the end <laughs> yeah golly you get lost Because a lot of people it's really funny because we we play in the rome non-smoking mostly and everybody says well do you ever go to is it rio Rio. That's the other non-smoking, right? You ever go down there? I'm like, it would take 20 minutes to walk over there. And you got to walk through all the smoke to get over there. And, you know, and it's the way Dave and I walk, we'll stop at a dozen machines on the way down there. So, Ooh, stop there. <laughs> stop mean, there. Ooh, a snack. But then it's also super dark. It is so yeah, dark in there. Low There's ceilings no in that room. Low, low ceilings. ceilings. Not like, if you ever want to feel depressed while gambling, go to the Rio non-smoking <laughs> <laughs> the wind star. Like you don't even have to play and you're already depressed. Well, what a I get great tired place. in there. Yeah. I do get yeah. tired in there. I will say yeah, the bathroom's it's... close by because it's not like the Rome non-smoking room where it's as big as a football field and there's only one <laughs> bathroom at the team's end goal. <laughs> oh man. Let's That's see. As as it gets. Oh, there's one from Sabrina here. What games are you most excited mm. for at G2E? Well, I don't know because they haven't been released yet. Usually G2E is where the games get released. Uh, but I am excited to see if every and IGT have been working on something and they release it at G2E. Uh, definitely want to see that now. 
uh, especially I want to see if that uh, the Huffin mini puff or whatever it was. Yeah. Triple the, puff. The, the, the three reel. Yeah. The three reel game. I want to oh, see if yeah, that, that around. Yeah. Because that yeah. was a really neat game. And I'd like to have it see it more of a centerpiece at next year's Light and Wonder booth. Did you see that one, Brantley, at the Light and Wonder? The I didn't. Puff that was in a stepper. Three reel. Yeah. It was pretty I know they have. Uh, I know they have um, Wicked Wheel in a stepper now. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's good to it see them kind of experimenting with that, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. Active reels, Light and cool. Wonder, and three reels just don't. Or steppers just they, don't really. They they need help. They for sure yeah. need help. Yeah. I think, you know, I think uh, IGT is the dominant one, and every is too. So. That's why this makes the most sense. And I'm excited because I think if anything, this is going to keep the stepper. When we say stepper guys, we're talking about physical reels that are moving. Um, it'll keep that alive even longer. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's super important in my book. Cause although the video slots are fun, God, you got to have the classics around. You've got to have them. You got to hear the click, 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 click. Even though we're all dying off, all these people that grew up on those, <laughs> you still got to have them around. <laughs> we need the millennials to play those too. <laughs> we need them to right? get excited about it. Well, that's why uh, I loved one. that. Uh, the, I loved that um, Clovers and Gold because yeah. it was three real, but it was really exciting. Yep. I played that one in uh, Foxwood. You remember that, Dave? Oh, yeah. It was a neat yeah. little game. Yeah, it is a neat little game. I enjoyed right, here's, it. Here's, here's one where we're going to give three different answers on. Oh, no. Okay, from Peter. Any advice to introduce my 20-year-old to gaming in Vegas? Wow. Yeah. You go first, uh, Dave. Okay. <laughs> i got to think about this So, one. for one, um, hopefully they like gambling. You know, like, the thing I'd have to recommend most for bringing a 20-year-old is stay downtown. Uh, that's where all the big action is. That's where all the, yeah, just party atmosphere is that's going to be more popular with a 21 year old also they're not going to be able to wander too far so you know you kind of feel safe if they go out without you i know the 21 year old but they're still your kid you know they're never not going to be your kid uh unless it's your daughter then do not let her out after 10 p.m <laughs> <laughs> period make sure she's within eyesight anywhere you go in vegas yeah. uh but no introduce them slowly uh hundred dollar day budget that's where i'm going to put a 21 year old you know, yep. make them make it last. Uh, let them know that hey, when you blow this, it's gone. That's it. There's no more. And you're going to have to keep yourself occupied, which I kind of imagine a 21 year old, you know, that younger millennial, upper Gen Z, whatever they want to call it. I guess millennial, younger millennial, whatever. Uh, those are the ones that are probably going to be at the pool more. And they're probably going to be doing the more, you know, kind of non gambling things. Uh, but definitely stay downtown. Stay somewhere fun like Circa. Uh, bring earplugs. That's all I got to say for you is bring earplugs because it's loud at Circa, especially if you're on the pool side. And that's what I got. I think Dave pretty much nailed it. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty much struggling here. Like, <laughs> pretty much everything. You know, I honestly, I mean, I think I think Dave's budget is like right on par with with that um but also like what he said a 21 year old is probably going to want to go out and do a lot more of the non-gambling things um i know like you know we're kind of, we're kind of to the point now at least i i'm speaking for me here but like if if when i go to vegas i like to just pretty much do my thing sit in my spot like i'm a creature a creature of comfort at this point but you know being 21 you're going to want to stay up all night and go to you know all the bars and all the clubs and all the you know so it's like eh, they're probably going to be doing more than gambling you know they're probably want to go going to go what see other things in vegas so um, hiking yeah there's a lot to do there's a lot to do yeah. in vegas uh one thing one thing i would just add to uh, yeah dave and yeah, brantley good definitely good thoughts um i'm more on the other side of make sure you're with him and that he's not falling for a lot of the scams and traps that you'll mm -hmm. end up with in Vegas. Like um, there's actually a YouTuber I watch. They're, they're a cute little couple. They're older, but they've been doing a lot of good trip reviews from Vegas, staying at different properties. And um, they got outside of New York, New York, they got nailed by one of those timeshare people and they would just not stop talking to them. And so 
you know, they're at least old enough to understand what timeshare people are, but a 21 year old first being there, when they be approached by somebody saying, Hey, you want to go to the free club tonight? You want to get free drinks and all that kind of stuff. They're going to be very susceptible to that. And so be there with them to say, look, whenever you get approached like that, you always got to ask yourself, what is it that they want in return? You know, they're going to make you sit through a grueling presentation and they're going to basically try to get you to sign on the line. And you definitely don't want a 21 year old falling for that. So, you know, Plus they have, have fun, money. but be careful. <laughs> yeah. Don't, see, don't, nothing's free. Now, <laughs> you got to pay something's in return. <laughs> now, I, now, when I was younger, that's for sure, I definitely took advantage of the timeshare things because it was like, hey, come listen to this presentation. We'll get you a dinner, a show, you know, and a free gift. And I'm like, okay, I got an hour or two to spare because I'm not, you know, my money's almost gone, so I might as well do this. Right. And so I'd spend like two hours, and then they get to the part of like, well, what can you afford today? I'm like, I can't afford nothing, man. I'm, <laughs> so I'm here trying to get a meal. <laughs> and I will have to say that they're pretty understanding about that. They just want people to be there to look like more people are doing it. I have seen some great timeshares. I have seen some horrible timeshares. So if you have the time, go for it. Yeah. This is a this is kind of sums it up, Maggie. <laughs> no is a sentence. <laughs> I love that. I love that, Maggie. I'm gonna have to that steal is, that. That's one. good. I've never heard that before. That's great. That is good. All right. Ava Aquilas, I uh, hope I said your name right. Is Cherry's Jubilee and Blazing Triple Sevens the same volatility? No, they're close, but not quite. Super close. Um, Cherry's Jubilee is basically hundred to a thousand, nothing in between there. Where Blazing Sevens, Majestic Lions, Winner Winner Chicken Dinner, they're all the same. Those have the 100, the 200, the 300, and then the 1,000. And so because of that, you're more likely to get the 2 and 300 on the Blazing Sevens, but you're more likely to get the 1,000 on the Cherry's Jubilee. But the trade-off is, is you're not going to get anything in between the 100 and the 1,000 on Cherry's Jubilee. So just... It's kind of like Brantley says, it's, it's jackpot or nothing. jackpot or bust. Like, I mean, that's, yeah. really what, that's really what Cherry's Jubilee is. And uh, where with those other ones, you might get a, it's fairly frequent that you get a 200 credit win um, on those. Um, I mean, if you put two or 300 in, you're probably going to get a 200 credit at some point. Um, nothing's guaranteed, of course, but that's the way those games are designed. You know, good luck out there. Uh, way more Blazing Sevens, those variants. A lot easier to find that game because Cherry's Jubilee is only at MGM Grand in Las Vegas. So, all right, what else we got here? There's one here from. There was a follow up question. Uh, it was just from Andrea, and she actually has two parts. Is uh, do not introduce <laughs> your 21 year old to gambling. 21 is way too young to gamble. Andrea, I agree and disagree with you. Uh, I think at the point of 20, being 21, you've been an adult for a couple of years. You should be able to have the understanding of how money works. However, I do think that starting out young with a very tight budget is a great place to start and learning good habits from the start. Had I had the chance to start back at 21, learning good habits, not just being poor and going to Vegas, spending 20 bucks a day or 100 bucks a day, but I'm talking like actually having to be strict with it. I think I'd be better off now uh, and I wouldn't have gone through as many hard lessons. That's for sure. So I think it's a great way to introduce money management, budgeting, uh, game selection, and how what to do with your time when you do run out of money. Yeah, here's here's the thing I'll say with that too is like I would rather you introduce your 21 year old to gambling than them to go out with a bunch of their buddies and be introduced that way. <laughs> yeah, and learn a hard right. lesson. That's a hard lesson, you know. I, I saw this on TikTok, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just like that, right? No, and you know that they've seen that stuff, so you you should be with them, so he understands what's actually going on. Oh, and have him watch our channels. That's, That's true. Also important. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> have him subscribe before you go. That's why we're here. All right. Let's see. Oh, wow. I thought that was George for a second. Oh, no. Is George here? <laughs> no, but this was, I thought this was George for a second. Oh, okay. Lucky Jewel Slots. Double Diamond Deluxe or Triple Diamond Deluxe? Which do you prefer? Double. Oh, double. Yeah. Lower. Yeah. 
the lower the multiplier, the better always. Um, it's just like between, you know, triple diamond and double diamond or triple stars. I mean, it or double, well, there isn't a double stars, but, or even triple double stars, you're adding more multipliers. It just, it just causes more volatility and it just starts pushing that up. So if you could stand it, double diamond, it's boring, but that's still the best out of that. I mean, yeah, I think anyway, that's, I think double diamond is still your best bet overall. Um, oh, this is a good one. Cheap slots and cheap gambling says Dave and Mark. Can you beat Brantley to Foxwoods? Lots of top dollar. We were already there. <laughs> they were already there. <laughs> yeah, we were already there. That's where I hit the top dollar grand. Um, so yes, the answer is yes, we can. Foxwoods. So yes, <laughs> we already, already beat them. <laughs> and we it's beat not them not a race, star. but we were there first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get you out, Brantley. Don't worry. I know. Let's see. Um, see in the in the summer in the summertime that's when everybody gets real jealous of Wyoming because it'll be a hundred degrees everywhere else. Yeah, and you're it's right. Like Seventy five here and yeah. perfect. That's true. That's definitely true. Um, good time for a road trip up to Wyoming. And Rod Edwards says, "Have you started talking about why some slot creators are going vertical? This is a YouTube thing. This mm -hmm. is not a creator yeah, thing. I don't know YouTube why thing. YouTube thinks that people want to watch a live stream." in vertical. But here's why we know that that's what they think. It's the default and you have to go in three or four different settings. It's buried to change it. And even then it tells you it's not recommended to change it. Um, that's what's going on. Uh, YouTube is trying to be the next TikTok, but they want to do it long form, which TikTok doesn't allow. So that's what YouTube is trying to push. And it's a miserable experience. Like uh, for me, even with a phone, like I would not want to watch a live show in vertical. Oh no. Uh, it just, it just, I've tried. Yeah. It really. I think like... they're, they're trying to compete with TikTok live. Uh, you know, it, it has yeah, everything right, to do right. with, um, and honestly has everything to do with the, with the younger audience. Um, yeah. you know, obviously you've got, you know, Gen Z out there, stuff like that. And it's there. Everything for them is vertical everything is vertical for them very rarely you know and and we even see this you know on on our side like if when i put out a short on tiktok it'll get you know a huge vast amount of reach and it's to a completely separate audience than youtube it's you know the audience that tiktok hits is going to be the you know i'm just turning 21 audience youtube right. really doesn't have a lot of that so the problem is that YouTube is trying to project to that. So they're starting to change a lot of things to make it more, I guess you would say like Gen Z younger audience friendly kind of thing. So it is annoying. It, it is because yeah. I, I don't think anybody, I mean, I don't want to watch a live stream vertically. Um, and also like if you're recording something like a gameplay or anything, it's very difficult to get everything in the shot. And then you not only that, but you've got text and everything else on the bottom of the screen. It's just, it's a mess. Just wait until it like, here's how you can tell too, is like, just go to, a, go to a concert, a show and look at how many people are filming it like this and not like this. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, I think that's a huge part <laughs> of how we hold our phones to begin with, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, yeah. It's just more convenient I mean, to just start yeah, recording like that. Hit yeah. record. My little yeah. button on the side there, my phone goes straight to my video. And yeah, you know, unless I turn it, it is set in vertical so yeah and that's probably a big part of it right there but what do i know i didn't they didn't ask me of course not <laughs> <laughs> no one asked me nothing nobody just once asked I want me someone, nothing so just once i want someone to say hey we're thinking about doing this so i can go that is the dumbest idea and then they're going to do it anyway <laughs> <laughs> right oh man Here's a good one. Uh, Steve M says, why don't the casinos eliminate the button screen beating? Some have. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Well, so, some have, um, you know, some casinos out there have banned, like, the button slapping and stuff like that. Which, by the way, we do not ever condone button slapping except right. for one except for one button and that's the like button so be sure if you're watching this slap <laughs> hey, that like nice. you, do, do, you just yeah, waited that perfect Bradley. thank you <laughs> see now, now you got to hit the thumbs up for that no i appreciate that thank you um yeah, Bradley's right no button slapping 
<laughs> except for the like button except for the like button that's a good one that's a good uh phrase um yeah it is very annoying and i think the aristocrat games are the worst i don't know what it is with their button but it's like there's no resistance to it so it, it, it makes a loud sound when you hit it so people it's are more like it easier it's like uh button slappers all right Good let's one. see Go Here's for one it. from Kino McKinney. Uh, why do they take away all the tier points at the beginning of the year? Uh, that resets the calendar year. Uh, almost every uh, program out there goes from uh, the 31st of December until the 31st, or sorry, the 31st of January till the 1st of January the next year. And then that resets the whole entire tier system. Some actually reset in February, but that way you basically start over again. This is the whole thing on how they get you to chase the tier score. How they get you to chase that, I want the better card. I want the better card. Of course you do. I do. So they got to reset those points so you go after it. It's yeah. it's it's adult carrot in the stick. That's what it is. They just put it out there. They put all the little features. But pick a good program. Pick one where your actual points don't expire. Your tier points are going to expire, but your points don't need to expire. So that's a good one to think about. Keeps Believe coming back. They, they want yeah. you to keep coming back. They don't want you to bank that stuff. Forget that. Uh, everybody keep on working at it harder. Then they can reset all your comps. Those are all <laughs> gone. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Harder and harder. Yeah. Keeps it's psychological back. warfare on you is what it is. Um, let's see. I want to find a good one here. Uh, going to Atlantic, Atlantic City. Boy, we've talked about this for a long time. We'll we'll get out there at some point, I promise. We're uh, totally going to do it. Yeah, we're totally going to do it. We're just figuring out when we're going to do it. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, yeah, we forgot about this. Uh, so Double Diamond, when is the coffee chats coming? So we're working on it now. Uh, Jody's going to be the one hosting it. Um and for you guys that haven't heard what this is, so it's it's called Coffee and Comments. And Jody has been collecting comments from our live shows, from our videos and everything, stuff that we didn't answer before, that we forgot to answer. We don't know what they're going to be in advance, but she's going to ask us live on this show. And we'll either react to it or give our response or whatever. So it should be a lot of fun. She's about to go on vacation. Well, not vacation. She's taking a bunch of kids to Costa Rica. I guess that's a vacation. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a vacation to me. But uh, legitimately, she gets... she's taking kids to Costa Rica. Legitimately. Yeah, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. You call it what you yeah. want to call it. But um, whenever she gets back, we'll definitely start doing that. Uh, probably on a weekly or biweekly basis or something. It'll be a lot of fun. And let's see. Because we try to answer everybody's comments. But, man, it is hard. There's a um, lot of them. I'm going to go with a quick yes. one here from Leanne Grant. Is Four Queens the only place in Vegas for Haywire? No. There's several mm -hmm. places. You can find yeah. it. You just got to look for it. Did you see that? Uh, here what Fast Eddie said. Uh, hey, guys, just leaving Las Vegas. Went to Four Queens. Played Haywire Deluxe. Hit the three <laughs> wilds for 400 bucks. I wow. noticed later it was the same machine that Dave was playing on the $100 challenge. Well, there you go. Nice. <laughs> I did not hit the four wilds. The three no, wilds. Jeez, way to go. Way to go. That's awesome. I love that game. I think that was game. the first slot machine I ever played in a casino. It was was double yeah, double diamond haywire, I think it was. I think it was the first yep. one. What was your first one, Bradley? Just regular double diamond. What about you, Dave? The first slot machine or the first haywire? The first uh, slot machine. Oh, this top dollar original. That was your first slot machine ever? Quarters, uh three quarters of spin. Yeah. Hmm. First slot machine ever. Wow. Yep. That's it was crazy. at Fremont Street Casino, first floor, right across from the uh, uh, quarter roulette that I had been playing. And I just went over there because I had a bunch of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what sealed the deal right there. <laughs> it was. I think, I think the big question is, so mine was actually a quarter. It was a coin-operated machine. Dave, yours was coin. Mark, was yours coin? Now that I don't remember. I got to be honest. I know it was at MGM Grand, oh, yeah. but I don't remember. I know it was quarter denomination, but I don't remember there being physical coins coin. going in. Because I don't think I, I remember. The first time I went to a casino was probably, gosh, 2000, 
three, maybe. I, I don't know. I have to ask Jody. Jody, if you remember the first time we went to a casino, um, <laughs> I think that was it. Um, but now I'm starting to think that the first time, I mean, I'm not going to get into this, but uh, now I'm starting to think the first time we went to one was Harris in New Orleans. Um, and now they and didn't don't have a lot of played there. They did not have a lot of coins. Um, yeah. Harris in New Orleans was one of the early adopters, uh, especially if it was the brick and mortar on land versus the riverboat, which it probably was. Mm. Uh, but Harris was not a big coin place. They were one of the early adopters of uh, ticket uh, tickets. Gotcha. Mm. And uh, now I will say that three of us as soon as here. I found dollar coins, now that was an experience. And <laughs> the big old still slugs. can't hear from that. Yeah. Uh, Jim, this is a good for, I, I wanted to hear what everybody has to say here. What is your preference? More free games and less wilds or more wilds and less free games in a bonus or somewhere in the middle. Mm. I went first last time. <laughs> I think so for me, I mean, if it's on a game that you get to pick, I always make the choice based on my budget, where my budget is at the time. So like, how risky am I going to be? So like, you know, we have those games like Dancing Drums where it's, you know, you either get the really big reels with a right. small amount of spins, stuff like that. Um, I will make the determination based on, you know, is it early on? Am I up in my budget? Do I want to be a little more risky? Um, it would depend on, honestly, it, it would honestly depend on the game because there's some games out there, you know, you look at, um, you look at Regal Riches, for example, and it's like, that's just all wilds. Like every other freaking symbol that you get as a wild, it's like at that point, <laughs> wilds are useless. You know, the yeah. wilds are meaningless on that game. Um, yeah. And then you've got, you, there's some other games out there that are like that as well, where it's like, you know, you could get like three wilds on the line and you think it's something big and it's like, oh, it's 20 bucks. What was that yeah, right. one by IGT? It had the clown on it. They they remade it, Mark. Oh, yeah. The, we, we just we played, played that it. as well. Yeah. Where yeah. it had like the clown on it i cannot remember the name of it but it was like it's a combination it, of like joker's wild was it a double no, dollars no. combination because they combined it el with cortez a, that was an el cortez yeah. was a double dollars combination oh, but on that yeah. one you could get like the three like wild symbols on the line and you think it's something big and it's like 20 bucks you yeah. know so really it it this one honestly i'm gonna have to say game specific yeah. it depends on the game that is true um my philosophy with these is if you can re-trigger, I always go with the more free games. If that's a possibility on that game, that's typically what I go for. Because I figure even if I get one to two times multiplier because I'm picking more free games, it's more likely to re-trigger with more spins. And so, you know, it could add up to more. Um, I've been burned on so many that give me very few spins and potential for high multipliers. Just, I never have had a good win on that. So I tend to stay away from it, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at too. All right, Dave. I'm in the middle and less like Brantley says, I'm doing well. And then I'll risk the higher one, you know, the, the less, yeah. the, the higher risk because I'm already up. I might as well try a higher one, but I generally go for that medium volatility in that area because it's like okay i want i want a little bit more conservative but i want to take a little bit of risk but i'm right there in the middle until right. i build up or go so down i have to go with the low one <laughs> which also um, does happen yeah oh yeah absolutely uh Sharona says, please explain high limit rooms. Stay out of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, it's just where they, they put the higher denomination machines, uh, typically speaking. There are some exceptions, but um, the idea behind them creating those rooms is that people that play at that level don't want to be in the middle of a bunch of crowds and a bunch of people you know, watching over their shoulder and things like that. It's just kind of one of those things when you're betting at that level, it's not what you want. And so they typically build these rooms to kind of segment that crowd away from the main floor. So they feel like they have some kind of privacy and, and, you know, it's just, there's a lot of money going on in there, a lot of money being exchanged in there. And so there's some big you spenders. Things, you, you stick that right next to a bank of penny machines and no high limit player would ever play. Nope. Them. <laughs> Can you imagine a yeah. hundred dollar like machine 
next to a penny huff and puff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nobody would ever play it. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, nope, nope, nope. And uh, Tommy, uh, I'm getting very close. I'm doing the editing on this. Um, uh, it, like I said before, it's it was it's probably our most ambitious project we've done so there far. Was a lot. Um, and but it's going to be one of our best, I think. It'll probably tank, but that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm excited we love to doing see it. it. <laughs> we joke, yeah. Brantley and I used to joke about this all the time. The ones where we like, oh crap, we got to put a video out today. And we roll out of bed and do one, and it's like yeah. the, it's the biggest video we've done in months. And then there's others that we spend a month editing and filming and getting all the information and stuff put in, and then it tanks. <laughs> it's, it's just true. really weird. I, YouTube is a weird, weird beast. But no, in all seriousness, um, I'm pretty close to being done. I need to do, um, Dave, one of the things we did not even do, I can't believe we forgot to do this. We didn't introduce it. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we jumped right into it. No, we didn't. No, no, there's, we did, we did one later on. It's in there. But that was the that was the exit. I thought we did the intro too. No, okay, we did the exit. Anyway, we're not going to quabble about that. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's in progress. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's tough. You, we want to make know, it fun and, and exciting. So I have not even I I haven't seen the video yet. But just hearing hearing y'all talk about it, Mark, do you remember when we went to Club ninety three and we seriously had like a hundred bucks and that lasted us hours in oh, there yeah. it was so yeah. fun and i honestly like i still look back and i still had the most fun time ever yeah doing that and i was playing i was playing what was it like 40 cents or something on the yeah uh on, on the, the phoenix, phoenix yeah. game yeah. and i was like but i sat there for like three hours and i was like yeah. man this is fun <laughs> you know? that is a really cool like, casino i can't wait to get back to it um i hope they still have the coin top dollars because i want to play them again <laughs> Just gotta play them before they disappear. But before they uh, disappear forever. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I definitely want to head back there. And from that Amanda, can the public attend G two E or is it invite industry only? Nope, you can attend. Uh oh, I'm starting oh, to lose my background. It's collapsing. <laughs> it's set. It's collapsing. Hold. Um, <laughs> new ones on its way. You, uh, you should no, anyone checking the camera, Dave. It'd be like, oh, it's an earthquake. Well, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. In uh, Dallas, it's Texas. It's an earthquake in Texas. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, anyone can attend. Uh, you just buy an expo ticket. Uh, sometimes you can find some free tickets. Uh, but it's if you are able to attend, I highly recommend it. I have a blast there. Even if I wasn't have a YouTube channel, I'd still have a blast there. Uh, probably have more fun because I wouldn't be trying to record and get shot down all the time. Yeah. Yeah, boy, they're there against that stuff. Yeesh. Uh Let's see. Well, Amy L says it's back to the, one of the first things that we were talking about. Uh, my parents took me to Vegas and in winter on my 21st birthday, dad tried to teach me a lesson on a slot. That's good. I hope it was a good lesson. I hope it was don't chase for bone. Don't chase bonus rounds. Don't play penny machines. <laughs> I hope it was all the good lessons, but that's, I think that's the way to get introduced into anything. Like your parents should introduce you to credit cards. Your parents should introduce yep. you to, how to get mortgages and loans and you know all these money management things but a lot of parents don't because they assume the schools are doing it and i'm not going to even get on that rant believe me because they're not <laughs> so it's it's really i mean especially going to an environment like that gambling for the first time um you really got to go in with some knowledge you got to uh because it this is one of the most interesting things to me and uh we're, we're trying to ask this on all the audits now going forward. And that is try to think back to the first time that you ever gambled. And what was the experience like? Did you win? Did you lose? And if you lost, do you still gamble today? And if you won, do you still gamble today? And I think more people that had a good experience that first time that they played a slot machine are probably more likely to still be slot machine gamblers these days. But if you went in with a couple hundred bucks and you lost it within 10 minutes, you may not even be, you may not have gambled since then. And I, it'd be an right. interesting to, statistic to figure out. Like, is it, is it really come down to that first time that you gambled? <laughs> that initial hook. Yeah. That initial hook that drew you in. Um, it's, it's interesting. We'll see, see how it turns out. All right, Dave, you pick some. Okay. Uh, this one here from Joan Lewis. 
Why does Windstar shut down slots at 1 a.m. on Wednesday? Even kiosks were shut down. Uh, Joan, I'm not sure what they were doing, if it maybe was a maintenance thing, but um, I've been there at 1 a.m. on a Wednesday, and it was not shut down. Uh, so it might have been something for maintenance or in that range. Uh, they generally are 24-7. Everything's up and running, although certain segments might be down for maintenance, cleaning, whatever. But I don't think yep. it was a, uh, I don't think it's a constant thing. Or a quiz. Yeah, probably not. Could be software updates. It could be not payback percentage changes. Software updates. Totally <laughs> different, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or cleaning the vomit off the machine. Got to clarify everything. Yeah. Um, they also refresh the machines from time to time. Um, as you, you've probably noticed, you've been on some games where it just starts getting really choppy. You know, it's starting to really slug, get sluggish and things like that. And they'll do a restart to clear out the RAM and everything to start fresh. So it has a good performance in front of people. Uh, they do it for that reason, too. Uh, there's a lot of handful reasons. But the one thing they're not doing is in there tweaking the odds or whatever. Uh, that's what most people think is going on. But, you know, that's not what's going on. And funny thing about Windstar, and Brantley, I wanted to ask you about this, the casino you worked at. Windstar, whenever they're ready to do cash drops, they're going to do cash drops, whether you're sitting there playing yeah. the game or not. Yeah. They, they make you cash out. And stand yeah. to the side while they do it, and you can continue playing. Um, it's crazy. Every, I, I every casino has a very strict time schedule that they stick to on that. Yeah, I mean, it's it could be nine p.m. on a Saturday night, and they'll do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like very. Strict. Do it just, it's probably because it's so big that they have to like just do it nonstop. You know, I don't know. And then it's something crazy. can be out of paper for like two days, so they'll figure <laughs> right. on that. <laughs> That's definitely true. All and right, Sam. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I mean, I Sam. <laughs> uh, will you guys come to Blackhawk, Colorado? Yes, we will definitely do that eventually. Uh, yeah. we're, we're, we keep toying around with the idea of going up to visit Susan, checking out her neck of the woods. Uh, and it's just one of those things where it's like, we still have full-time jobs. We still have lives, but we are going to try to make all these things. There's also a comment for Atlantic City. That is totally on our list as well. Absolutely want to make Atlantic City. Absolutely want to make Blackhawk. Want to make Wendover. It's like you have this list that keeps growing and growing. And it's like, <laughs> how yeah. do I get to all these places? You know, I, I have to have time to do all that. Uh, yeah. But eventually we will. Um, yeah. So soon. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to put it. Five to seven business years. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Oh man. Um, All right, Mark, you had one. Uh, I lost it. So if you got something, go okay, ahead. I got another one here from Keno McKinney. Why are bingo parlors allowed in Texas, but not Type Two bingo slot machines? Huge difference between those two things. Um, although, yeah. yes, Class Two game is bingo. In the eyes of lawmakers, it is not. Uh, bingo being a card. Balls drop, all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's cute. That's funny. Churches do it. Start putting it into what looks like a slot machine. Yeah, people get a little testy on that. Uh, but I will say this. Gambling is closer in Texas than it has ever been before. Um, we'll see what happens in this next legislative section. Um, very, very interested about it. Maybe not completely, but more progress. Fingers crossed. Windstar, Windstar is going to get their ass kicked. <laughs> If they open it up here, <laughs> it will not I, so be the I was thinking casino about this. anymore. I was thinking about this. Um, Windstar owns a lot of land in North Texas because they have a horse training facility there. They actually have two of them. They also own Lone Star Park in Grand Prairie. So they already have a foothold ready to go. But at the same time, would they make another operation here in Texas? I don't know. That's too yeah. early to tell. But I think they would have they definitely to, right? the money. I mean, you'd almost have to. You got to think, you think that they have a contingency go. plan because, I mean, yeah, they're sitting right there on the border. And like Dave said, the last time we were there, just go through the parking lot. All Texas license plates. All Texas Everywhere. Plates. There's no Oklahoma license plates anywhere. And it's like, what are they going to do if Texas opens up a mega resort in Dallas and Fort Worth? I mean, Windstar will suffer for that. Unless but, they own it and they move properties. But could, I just now thought of this. You know how, if you ever, 
did you ever look into the hotel room or while you're waiting for the elevator at what the actual Windstar building looks like? It all looks like oh, temporary it looks, tents. It is. All the way it's around a trash with a facade place. sitting out. Hmm. When they first you know, started, it was just a steel building, one of the old kind of Quonset hut looking buildings. That's all it is. That's all it still is. They just put a facade up on it, around the top of it. Right. But I do think, right. though, that people will still come to Windstar and Choctaw because that's where their comps are. That's where they're used to gambling. So I think that that's going to be the ultimate draw for that. I mean, Mark, if there was one near you, you'd probably go versus driving three hours. But if yeah. you had to drive two hours in the opposite direction or three hours to Windstar, you'd yeah. probably go to Windstar where all your comps are. That's true. That's true. So established they will versus still suffer, though. <laughs> There's no doubt. They'll about still it. suffer. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we'll scale down to where like Charles, all those will get yeah, hit. Even Vegas will suffer if yeah. Texas gets gambling. So that's true. Uh, it's always one of those things you go to Vegas to meet other Texans. This is a good one, and I want to hear uh, what Brantley has to say on this one, too. So Josh says, do you feel it is worth it of still visiting Vegas to gamble, or should you save and play at your local casinos instead? Man, this is uh, a good, really good topic. I will I will say I will say this. I, I know Dave's going to disagree, because I know Dave loves Vegas and <laughs> everything about Vegas. Um Damn, after predictable. after spending time after spending time at Wendover, which is three hours from my house, there is no difference to me between what I get at Wendover and what I get at Vegas, other than Wendover gives me a lot more. I get better comps at Wendover. I get still all the free food that I want. I still get all the free alcohol that I want. It's close to home. They have table games and they have slot machines from Penny all the way up to those super ultra high DNOM slot machines. Plus the fact that it is closer, I don't have to deal with the traffic and the crowds and all of that. I'm not a bar person. I'm not a club person. I'm not, you know, a, I'm not one of these people that likes to go out and do all of these other things. Like, yeah, Vegas is great if you love to do things, you know, outside of the casino. Like if you're like, oh, I want to go to a concert or a show or a, you know, something like that. Vegas is wonderful for that. But if you're not into that, there's no reason to go to Vegas. Yeah, absolutely not. I see. To, to be honest, um, if it wasn't for things like G2E, I probably would not go to Vegas again for the rest of this year. Yeah, because it's just not worth it. It's 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 overcrowded. It's overpriced. It's it's more of a headache to go there than it is to just go to Wendover and you get all the same things, only yeah. no crowds. So it, it really depends on what it depends on what you like to do. So if you're like if you have like your family with you and you're wanting to go to all these nice places or, you know, like if you like shopping, I mean, Vegas is great for shopping. Vegas is great for shows, all, yeah. all different shows and food and everything. But if you're just one of those people, like, you know, I just want to get away. I don't really want to be around a lot of people. I just want to gamble and play what I like and stick with my creature comforts. There's no reason to go to Vegas. Yeah. Dave, I'm, I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stocking. <laughs> um, I'm probably somewhere in the middle between you two knuckleheads. Um, I think I like Vegas, but it is starting to get very old for me. I've been going every three months for the last, I don't know, gosh, it seems like maybe 10 years now, maybe less than that. But it's starting to wear on me a little bit every single time I go. What what are you making that face for? What's your problem? I, I I do know that there is video proof that will be out soon that says kind of otherwise. <laughs> what? <laughs> when What'd we're you downtown, do, you're like kid in the candy store, seeing I was. stuff for the first time and everything. Like, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I realize that, but I still can, can I finish what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish my thought. Um. <laughs> So I, <laughs> your face just killed me. Now I don't even know what I was going to say. Thanks a lot. Mark likes Forget Vegas. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it, here, here's, you know, let me just, okay. real quick. 
I'll finish that up and then Amy will get to your super chat. Okay. We appreciate it, of course. Um, so I think one of the things that I learned, especially when Brantley and I did our road trip is that there are so many other things out there. And, um, I had so much fun on that road trip, like just going to these hole in the wall casinos, trying these old school, you know, machines that we haven't seen in years and decades and experiencing different environments with casino layouts and the charm and everything that goes with it. Um, I've been to Vegas so many times that it's just kind of boring. You know, I just don't get a whole lot out of it. And I feel like the only thing I end up doing is just gambling more than I should. Uh, where at these other places, you know, we would just drive in to get gas and then go play 20 bucks and see what happens and then get back in the car and leave. And there was just something fun about just casino hopping like that. Um, so I think what it's taught me is like, there's a lot more out there besides Vegas and, uh, you should explore. Um, you, you never know, you're going to walk into a casino and you're going to find some gym in there, some game that you've been, maybe you played 20 years ago and you haven't seen since, and it's going to be sitting in a corner in there. And it's, you know, uh, as soon as I walked into uh, club 93 or where is that what it was called? Club 93. Mm -hmm, yeah. Club 93. As soon as you walked in there and we walked around, what did I see? Top dollar deluxe quarter sitting in the dusty corner over there next to a bunch of like stacked chairs and stuff i don't even, i mean it was not very pretty also but. this is one thing that P, a lot of people don't realize and mark is 100 percent correct the united states is a big place with a lot of things to do and see yeah but a lot of these smaller casinos like especially like wendover when you compare them to places like vegas so if you go to vegas you customer service is really big for me um yeah. It's, it's one of the few interactions with people that I actually like doing is, <laughs> you know, interacting with customer service. Um, you go to Vegas and you might have an interaction like when you check in and then that's it. And then the rest of the time you'll, you'll be lucky to ever see anybody else on the floor, but you go to a lot of these other small places and it just feels, you know, more homey and inviting. Like they get to know your the, name. Yeah. Like after, the attendants yeah. come up to you, yeah. you know, like it's my pleasure to have you here. You know, like they're, they're wanting to like, you know, talk with you and all of that and just, they make it more fun. Right. And I think that Vegas is just so rush, rush, rush. Like it's a numbers game for them. Like they've got millions of visitors. Like, you know, we, we've got a hundred thousand people here at this resort this weekend. Why should we pay attention to you? kind of thing you don't yeah. get that if you go to a smaller casino so that's another true, big thing that's a good point i mean it, it really is i mean yeah there's just so much other to see like uh you know i want to get down to yamava jody's talking about that my sister's down there so we'll go see her and get to check out yamava um there's a lot of places of course new jersey i want to go out there and play um because i know they got a lot of old school stuff out there still and there's just you should go around and and do the experience but i mean here's the other draw of this and this is why i'm in the middle between you two guys is that vegas is where all my comps are and it's hard to spread it it's hard by going to all these new places and spending my gambling money which i don't have a lot of and just spreading it around all these places and i'm not going to get anything for it maybe a meal and that's it or if i just congest it all into las vegas <laughs> and do all my spending there at mgm properties i know i'll maintain comps uh, at least for a while. And so, I mean, that's marketing, right? Like that's, they know that, like, that's why they give you all that stuff is because they want you to keep coming back. They don't want you to think about all the other places that you could potentially be going to. And so that's why I'm kind of in the middle. Like I am getting kind of tired of Vegas in a way. I do have a new interest in downtown because I did have a blast down there. I thought it was really cool. Um, four Queens. I mean, I, I kind of want to stay there next time just for shits and giggles. Like just go stay at four Queens. <laughs> I know the rooms aren't going to be great, but you know, I loved playing there. It is just, if, when I visualize a casino, that's the one I want to play in. Like, I, I don't know what it is. It's the decor, the, the machine selection there. I mean, 90% of that floor were old three row machines. Um, and that's just not something you find anywhere else. And I, I just, I love that. And maybe I should stay down there next time just for fun. You know, anyway, we'll see what it holds, but yeah. It's really a personal thing when it as you can tell, we all three had different answers. I yep. mean, it, it really comes down to what your personality is and what you enjoy um, before you can decide what that you want to do when it comes to that. So, all right, let's get on to another topic. We'll go for a little bit, 15 more minutes or so. Amy's thing first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get the super chat. 
So uh, oh, there we go. Amy, there we go. I uh, just want to thank you three so very much. I uh, appreciate all you do and have learned and continue to learn so very much from you. Look forward to your videos, tips, and live chats every week. Well, thank you so much, Amy. Uh, we thank you, Amy. We certainly do appreciate that. Um, not only the super chat, but just the kind words. I mean, this is, it's an uphill battle. What, what Brantley and, and Dave and I are doing is an uphill battle. It's difficult, but, uh, we're, we're building an awesome community here and I, I cannot be happy enough. And this, just keep telling your friends, if people want to be educated and they want to be smart gamblers, they got to start following us. You know, it's just that simple and hopefully we'll continue to grow because of it. So really do appreciate it, Amy. Thank you. And Sam sent us one too, a 99 cent super chat. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. Sam. Do appreciate thank you, Sam. it. Sam. Awesome. Awesome. And there was one that was said, You guys are hilarious. I'm laughing. And I'm like, What? Do I entertain you? Am I funny like a clown? How am I funny? <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny about me? <laughs> am I here to amuse you? <laughs> no, the way you tell the joke. That's a, this is, you're just it just you're just you're just you're just funny you're just you're just funny and speaking you know of the funny thing about funny. that scene real quick is it did you ever do research about that scene yes it's completely ad-libbed you just came up with it the reactions were real and they just kept filming and all the actors like the all the actors around the table and everything didn't know what was going on and they were just like uh like they were just stunned and they kept it like it was so it's a beautiful scene anyway all right am i drinking moonshine no i'm not drinking moonshine but who is drinking moonshine joe's over there because he said march are you drinking moonshine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's drinking moonshine joe <laughs> yeah who's the drunk <laughs> oh man Look, movie good, good fellow double diamond what did you lose in vegas uh, I lost about five hundred dollars, which was uh, my daily budget for one day, um, and uh, being there for what five days? Yeah, almost six. That's pretty good. I consider yeah. that be extremely good, especially for as much as we played. So I think I yeah. I came with a thousand. I lost eight hundred. Came back with two hundred. So for but again, again, we got a lot of content. We were there for five, five days. days. Five days five is tough, days. man. It's tough to have that kind of budget for five days, but we made it happen. A lot of ups and downs. I mean, we were both up, you know, fairly good for a while, but we, you know, we we had four Can't days play. left. So what do we do? <laughs> we had four days left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, no, coming back with something was uh, was better than nothing. So now we had a really good time. It was, and for my in my perspective, everything was comped. Um, I mean, for the most part, eight hundred dollars is what I lost for five days in vegas and that i mean that's good entertainment lots of entertainment that, for that. so i thought it was very reasonable and from amy l if you get a hand pay in vegas do they take taxes out not in vegas there's no. state taxes no. uh there's no state taxes. Yeah, state taxes yeah. they won't they won't take out the taxes there in oklahoma they will and you can tell them whether or not to take out taxes or not my recommendation is take out taxes you do what you want to do but i'm taking taxes out in Oklahoma, especially, you do not want to file an Oklahoma state tax return <laughs> no. just for a hand pay that you got that you didn't claim the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> they don't tell you that when they're counting the money out. Uh, it's like they don't tell you what a pain in the ass it's going to be to file a state return in another state you don't live in. It's like that's not going to be easy thing. Right. <laughs> Dave's background is making room for the new baseball stadium. I, if they come all the way to here, we got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> They're moving I'm on in, Dave. But I want to see. <laughs> uh, thank Super you, Mike, for the $10 tonight. Super Chat. I uh, really do appreciate you. Thank you, buddy. Haven't thank seen you, you in here before, so, so welcome. Thanks for being here. And thanks for the Super Chat. And Joe V says Four Queens is one of the best. Silver Strike, yes. I liked Silver that Strike. machine. That that was fun. That was fun. Um, My Four Queens one. Did you uh, do you remember Brantley the uh, the one that gave you the forty dollar token? Yeah, I did. The front. I, I, I turned Dave, that one back in though. Dave I didn't got keep a, that. Oh, one. did you turn it back in? I wouldn't. Yeah, I turned that back in. in. <laughs> okay. I sold. I sold mine to Mark. <laughs> I did, I did pay for it. <laughs> he wanted the 41 so bad. I'm like, here, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did want the 41. Um, those are fun, though. They have, God, yeah. man, they have like 15 of those machines in there. They're all over the place. 
I kept uh, the $10 game. one because I felt that was yeah. a what, what you'd spend on a souvenir. Yeah. And they hit fairly frequently. I mean, I think if you put 20 or 40 bucks in, you're probably going to get at least one out of there. So it was, right. it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It's fun to get it's something different, lead. Back, you know, not just crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a physical coin. I mean, how cool is that? And um, it's a complete surprise because it's like blank bar. You're like, I'm not getting anything. Ooh, coin. Blink. And then you get a coin. Yeah. Yep. I like that. Here's one from Wes. On bingo based games, if I don't choose all pay lines, does it change the chances for a win? For example, if I choose one pay line on a 20 line game, the bingo pattern doesn't care how many lines you choose. Correct. The bingo pattern does not care. However, uh, the chances of it going red are going to be extremely low because <laughs> yeah. you're going to one pay line, right? Yeah. Uh, but all, all the multiply, multiplying your bet, it just multiplies your win. And of course, playing yeah. all the 20 lines, you're going to have more chance of hitting a line in 20 lines. But if you're playing five line, you don't get a choice. You pay, you play five lines. Yeah. Uh, you can't choose one. Uh, and same thing with nine reel, um, or sorry, nine line, five reel. You can play all nine lines, one each. So there's not a whole lot where you can do that through. Um, but of course, like uh, Neptune's Gold, I think it let you play uh, the nine, the uh, nine line, three reel games. Will let you pay less and the, the warning i was going to give you for that is that if you do play less than the nine line it is going to tease the crap out of you thinking that you got it. missed out on something because remember the reels on bingo is all for show like it doesn't mean oh. that you're going to miss anything or whatever so they will tease you to try to get you to bet up on that by showing like Dude. three wilds on line nine and stuff you think oh man if i was betting nine i would have gotten that no you wouldn't have no you wouldn't have, <laughs> no, you wouldn't have. And let's see, we got another five dollar super chat in here from uh, Ultimo Mushido. Ultimo Mushido. I uh, went to the casino with a budget of five hundred dollars and put one hundred dollars in a machine. Does that mean my max bet should be less than one dollar? So there's a couple ways to to think about this. So um, the way I typically approach it is I create sessions for myself. So if I'm bringing five hundred dollars to the casino, I might create five sessions of hundred dollars each, or I may just do two sessions of two fifty each. Whatever your session value is, is how you determine what your max bet should be denomination and like dollar size. So if I have a hundred dollar session, then I would probably max bet around a buck, uh, maybe two dollars, but really not any higher than that. Um, and then I also adjust it based on how that went. So if I end up, you know, taking a hundred to two hundred, well, then I'll go play two dollars a spin. And if I take that to three hundred, then I'll go play three dollars a spin. So I'll adjust along the way based on how well I'm doing. But the one thing you don't want to do, which is what everybody does, is bet higher because you're losing. <laughs> yeah, don't do That's that. That's what everybody do does. They don't think, chase. oh, I just can't seem to get anything, so I'm just going to bet higher and hope for the best. And that's where it just, whew, it just tanks after that. So that's the one thing you just got to stay like mentally, mentally locked in to what you're willing to bet. So if you're Put a hundred dollars in the machine, you're gonna bet two dollars a spin. Don't go higher than that for whatever reason, yeah. whether you're losing or higher or whatever, just stay at that until you're done with your session. Uh, that's the best advice I can give you. Uh anything else you guys want to add to that? I think you hit it right on. Yeah. Picking the right game with that. If you're at a, a yeah. quarter game, yeah. Gonna be hard to, you know, you're at a quarter three real game, gonna be hard to bet, you know, over 75 cents, you know. So Pick a good game that makes your money last. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Yes, please. We want you guys to report back on this. Um, I heard there are a lot of changes to Slot of Fun over at Circus Circus. Yes. Um, but they have brought in a ton of coin machines. Like people have said top dollar, pinball, all that kind of stuff they're bringing back in there. So scout it out and let us know because i want to know what's in there because <laughs> if it has all that stuff i might change what i said about lots going back <laughs> yeah. mark starts staying at circus circus I, I know. no i'll definitely walk there I definitely i'll be there for a there. day in april and i'm going to check it out for sure oh okay okay but these all guys right, will one. be faster they'll get back to us yeah so this one from it. chris never had a comp in my life 
despite playing with my card every time. Wow. Too much of a low roll. Chris, uh, hmm. I really want to know more here. Uh, yeah. Where, where are you playing? Weird. What are you playing? Uh, where is the main thing on my mind is where, uh, yeah. because you should be getting something. Uh, if you're not, I'm thinking Everybody your, wear, something. your wear is the yeah. problem. Yeah, the casino you're getting. Unless the casino time. really sucks. Like, Come to Wendover. Come to Wendover. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you Wendover. Go. Uh, at very least, let's just say you walk into any anything on the strip. I don't care. Harris. Let's say you walk into Harris and you put five. You just get a card. You don't even have to gamble. Just get a card. Or you put $5 in a machine with your card. You're going to get mailers. You're going to get the comp nights. They're going to be midweek. But you're going to get something, you know. Yeah. Um, I think there's a problem with your playing at. I definitely want to know more though. Uh, drop me an email, gamble smart, yeah, gamble safe at gmail.com. Yeah, we'll help um, you out yeah, there. That's, that's yeah, pretty sometimes. bad. Like, I mean, even I've never heard gosh, of that. I, uh, Diane, who was our first uh, gambler audit, she went to Winstar for the first time. Like, she'd never been in the casino for 10 years. And she went in there for the first time. And then when she got back three weeks later, they sent her an offer for two rooms free. Yep. She played less than a hundred bucks. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I really, I mean, we want to know what the casino is and what the circumstances are. Cause that just doesn't sound right. Like maybe it's a casino. Yeah. Like it's the only one within us. The only one around 600 yeah. mile radius. And then, yeah, that makes sense. But usually they try to give you at least something to get you in there. So very interesting. All right. What else we got? Lots of questions tonight, guys. Sorry, we were definitely not going to get to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not going to get to all these. Um, and uh, Steve M says, any benefit to seek out a host, or is that setting me up to overspend? It can. I, I mean, that's you, you don't want to, and this is something that I've kind of struggled with, that you don't want to feel like you need to please your host. And they're going to make you feel like you should. Um, because that's their whole that's the whole way that the thing works is that host gives you stuff. You want to be thankful for that. You want to keep him happy so that keeps you happy. And so then you feel locked in. Like you feel like, oh, I gotta make sure I keep my play up when I'm there. Otherwise, he's gonna get in trouble. And that means he won't be able to give me any comps or override any comps or so. And then it's this big psychological game, and you don't want to fall into that, number one. But it is good to seek out a host if you can. Um, because there are, th- especially the, depending on the property, but it's very good um, in most situations because they can do things for you that you cannot do yourself. Um, like being able just to text them and say, hey, I'm coming this weekend. Can you arrange everything? And then they email you back or text you back a confirmation number. You didn't have to call anybody. You didn't have to go to the website. You didn't have to put a card on file. You didn't have to do any of that stuff. So they can take care of all that. And then sometimes they can bump up your free play uh, beyond what the system tells them. There's there's a lot of things that a host can do, which is very beneficial. But don't ever feel like you are locked in. You know, don't right. feel like you need to continuously please them um, because, yeah, that can be dangerous. And that's what, again, that's what the system is designed to do. They, they want you to feel like you need to, because every host I've ever had has always said, it's like, I could probably get you that room, but you got to take care of me. It's like... I don't want to be no, told to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me that. <laughs> you mean take care of okay, you? Just like, give me the basic room. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, good question though. Oh, oh let's take a couple more. From George, no, oh, super chat no. from George, four ninety nine. He didn't put brick or hammer, so I'm like, is it actually? Yeah, George? I guess this is <laughs> one then. For all of you, if you had to pick one slot to play at a hundred dollars to spend with a five k budget, what would it be? Hmm. Hmm. Pinball. $100, man. Yeah. $50 Denom, two credit, pinball. I was thinking the same, believe it or not. Because it's going to yield a high, it's going to yield a higher bonus than top dollar. And possibly you you, possibly. Yeah. But you could also, I don't know to, to me, that would, that would be my choice. Cause I, I also toyed with the idea of maybe doing like hundred dollar at double diamond, but obviously even though double diamond is a great game it does get boring <laughs> so yeah. pinball you want to get the bonus yeah 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 hmm. still gonna be double top dollar same with brantley though 50 dollar uh two credit to spin yeah double top dollar old, old school not the new one the old one. Oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah definitely yeah pinball top dollar for the I win gotta, i gotta go with top dollar but i'd probably <laughs> 
Would you go with top dollar or double? That's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to figure yep. out what I'm going to do. I'd probably go Slightly. with regular top dollar. Slightly I've more always, bonuses. I've always felt if you're going to go higher in denomination um, on playing top dollar, you should play the regular top dollar, not the double. Um, just because more line hits. Yeah, you get more line hits on the regular top dollar, plus the bonuses are compressed into this like 30 to 45 range where it's it's actually harder to get 15 and 10 credits on regular top dollar than it is on double top dollar. Um, but it also means that you're not going to get like, you know, times two times two for 640 credits. It's not even possible on the regular top dollar. But I would rather have like these small wins, you know, just more consistent, knowing that if I do get the regular top dollar, I probably will end up with some kind of offer around 35 or 40 credits and I'll be happy with that. You know, right. I think for high high denomination play, I think it's a better better call. So yeah, good question though. And thanks sure, for are you that, sure George. you don't want to play King Cash, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Which we found. I won't even play that on quarters, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh God. Doesn't Tropicana I can't have one of those? It's about to be destroyed, Brantley. So I don't know. I I still I I cannot believe that they brought that into the S3 cabinet. Oh, I know. I still can't believe that. I'm like nobody plays that game. It's a tough <laughs> game. It's very misleading. Like you, you think, oh man, it's it's all I got to get is three line heads mixed. That's easy. easy. Oh, I got one. Yeah. Oh, I got yeah. two. No. Yeah, it's hard to get the three, for sure. Oh, where was that day that we were at? Uh, that had Quack Shot and Money Mad Martians. The Plaza. And all that. The, Plaza the Plaza. Yes. Did. Yeah. All yeah, downtown. So if you ever yeah. want to play those uh, uh, old school bar crest games, um, the ones I just named, and then there was what was the drag Golden Dragon, Golden Dragon, and uh, Quack Shot, Triple Double Diamond with cheese. Yep, that was there. I played that. Got the bonus really quickly too. Yeah, I mean, like within six spins, I got the bonus. They've got a real nice bank there of all all the old bar yep. crest machines down there, all in quarters. So a lot of fun. Nice. We couldn't get out of that those. casino, man. We were trying to leave for like two hours. <laughs> we just couldn't get out of there. <laughs> but we played forever and we didn't lose any money. It was really nice. Yeah. You know, it's just and we got to see Brian Christopher's casino. Right. Uh that right. section in uh the plaza, which to me was a huge letdown. Uh yeah, that was, was just like I this this was what was the huge thing. It's pretty scary in there, to be honest. It's like small. I just felt it's... comfortable. I don't know. It was very weird. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you guys feel differently, but it just it doesn't feel like it did on camera when he was showing it off. It feels it looked bigger. Yeah, it looks so much bigger. It's strange. Our it's zone like is way bigger. <laughs> yeah, at, the, at the Rose, our zone Rose is, is way bigger. The Sony Rose. Yeah, yeah. yeah the Cowboy See, the slot Cowboy zone is bigger. <laughs> Lost and we have. A, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, and now we have a bar attached to it too. Oh, Ooh. there you go. Sweet. Lost in Carolina. Who is the employee of the month for Prestige Worldwide? That's Dave. That's you. You ended it right there. That's more of a statement than a question. It's always me. What are you talking about? See, this is they don't watch my stuff. I know who watches my stuff. Thank you, Lost in Carolina. <laughs> like you watch little, any of the videos I do? Every single one. Bullshit. My little tagline, <laughs> my name on there. I keep putting different titles. You know uh, what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start trolling you in the middle of my tip videos. Go for it. I watch it and everyone. see if you say anything. You, go for it. Just to test it. See, I put my little tagline and I put CEO Prestige Worldwide. Oh, I no, I have been reading those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. All right. Uh, we're going to take one more question. And oh, not this one, though. Different one. Okay. I'll take one okay. more after this. Uh, there's an old haywire in Tropicana. Yes, I've got a video coming out. Uh, for kind of a farewell to Tropicana, uh, April 2nd, it's all gone. So if you have a chance to get to Tropicana before April 2nd, get there. They're talking about demolition being by the end of April, beginning May. And they mean like hmm. gone. So get there fast. Yeah. I just it'll want to get quite the time. To, it'll be quite the time to watch the used market. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially oh, some of those. Um, you know, uh, uh, this is something I don't know if, if you you guys check these out, but 
um, like uh, Gambler's General Store, uh, Spinetti's Gaming there in Las Vegas. You know, that, that's yeah. where I bought my roulette table from was Spinetti's Gaming. Oh, yeah. Um, so they buy a lot of this stuff. So I'm pretty sure that those guys are probably chomping at the bit to get at the Tropicana stuff. Oh, so yeah. watch when they Table close and stuff like that. Check yeah. those out because you could probably buy everything <laughs> off the <laughs> used market. That's true. That's definitely true. Oh yeah, man. I dollar. just want the games. Double top dollar doll one. That's what I want. I have tried to sell you a double top dollar so many times, and you're just like, oh I need room. I, I you want too much money. That's how much they cost. They're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but one of Tropicana might be cheaper. <laughs> you won't be, you won't be able to get it from Tropicana. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guarantee so there probably are. Holdouts always lose, Dave. There was a um, Mandalay Bay was doing something kind of promotion or whatever. They moved a whole bunch of their old school machines, including a bunch of top dollars and a bunch of old three reels. And they put them all up in a corner. And I told Mark, go get a, a dolly and a truck. I'm going to go find some jumpsuits and get a clipboard and we're going to go there and act official and just grab some of these no one yeah these are out. uh a refurbishment or we were yeah, called a refurbishment we take these to the warehouse yeah mikey yeah. mikey sent us what are you talking about why are you busting my chops mikey sent ah, us. jimmy jimmy dropped the ball again he told he was supposed to call you use guys oh my god use guys. okay now i won't gonna, ba- i won't bail you out Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You can bail us out, but we'll still have the machine, so we win regardless. There we go. Win, win. Yeah. True. Okay. Well, you now know, is it worth like getting all those top dollars and then going to prison for about five years, and then when you get out, you have your top dollars? Yes, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, Peter says, uh, "Are most three wheel games low volatility?" Uh, yeah, but you yes, gotta be careful. Careful with that one. Yeah, careful, careful with, with that, that one. Because um, there's some out there that are uh, well, I mean, we can even let's look at Black 10 Diamond. times pay. 10 yeah, times pay, you know, look looking at it, you think, oh, well, it's it's old, simple. it's three reels, it's got a yeah. very simple pay table, but you look and it's like, oh, you go from one credit to ten thousand credits. It's like yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, that's yeah. yeah. We saw a 12 so, times play at Mohegan Sun as well. Believe it or not, there was pay. actually a couple of times that I played 12 times pay and I was I was nailing it for some pretty good nice. jackpots, but that was a that was a five line. I think if you if you're going to play any of those games do a five line. If yeah, you are going to do something yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. And I I can't remember which Dave, you would know this. Which casino is it that has the 100 times pay? I want to say it was um New York, uh, New York had it. But they got rid of New York, New York it. I want to say it was one. Paris. I, I thought Paris, Paris had, it. had one. Paris is gone. I know that for sure. Yeah. But Paris did have one. And then also, um, Harris used to have one, but that's been way, way back. It was in their high limit room. And it was for, uh, I want to say, oh, five dollars. Oh, man. Can you imagine playing that for high limit? Oh, my God. Oh, God. Might as well five just throw your money away. Yeah. $100 a spin, 100 <laughs> times pay. <laughs> oh, that was $25 20, a spin. Yeah. Like, I think at that point, you have better luck at Mega Bucks. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's awful. They had, New York, New York had a fifty times pay one too. Um, they had both of those. Uh, I think I played the hundred times pay once, and I I never got the symbol. Never, never, never you even see showed the up. symbol. It's like you know, I, even I see saw it, it but it was just not on yeah. the line. <laughs> and it's only on the third reel. So at least five times yeah. it'll show up on the real once in a while. Same with ten times, it won't match anything. Yeah. But all you got to do is get a cherry and you're walking away winner. Yeah. New York, New York. Now I'm reminiscing. New York, New York used to have um, nickel five line double 10 times pay. You know what I'm talking about where it has the two times mm-hmm. and the 10 times. Yeah. Oh, and, I think uh, they, they still have it. It was there. I think it's in quarters there. now. Yeah. But it was, they, it was five line. Yeah. yeah, it was five line. But no, I think it's quarters now. Yeah. But it, it is five line nickels. double 10 times pay. Yeah. They yeah still I remember getting it. the 10, 10. Oh, one 10 times 10 times 7 on that. I don't even remember how many nickels it was. It was a lot of nickels. It was a lot of nickels. <laughs> I mean, it was like $600. It was crazy. Wow. <laughs> on a 25 cent bet, you know, it was that was a long time ago. But yeah, that is a fun one. And uh, we, we will end uh, the show with this one. Uh, 
Double Diamond says, wonderful to watch you three. Very comical, but also informative. That's what we're trying to do. Thank you. I so really do appreciate it. that. Uh, again, Brantley, thank you so much for being on the show. We're definitely going to keep doing this. Brantley. And uh, we'll be over on Brantley's uh, show as well. And uh, just try to keep you guys informed, keep, uh, keep you entertained, educated, all that kind of stuff. Uh, because we want you to be smarter gamblers, of course. So that's what it's going to come down to. So as always, um, I think we got everything. Anything you last minute thoughts for either of you guys? No, nothing I got. Nothing that I can think of. Okay. Be smart. Be smart. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> yeah. Gamble smart. Yeah. Who's going to say yeah, it? Brantley's going to say Gamble it. safe. All right. There we go. Go. <laughs> say it. Gamble smart, gamble safe. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Really do appreciate you and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow's tip. And then we will have the $100 challenge video coming out very soon. I promise. Very soon. I'll start I'm excited to see that. I, I got to see that one. It, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. All right, guys. Take it easy. Have a good night. And we'll see you Have later. a good one. All. Have a great all week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>